Hello, Tabitha here with another art snack for you. So I want to talk about the undertones in color today and how not all color pigments are created equal. So the other day I was at a student's house to teach a private lesson and I had her mix some of her burnt sienna with white. And she did. So burnt sienna, kind of a brownish red color. She mixed it with white and it turned lavender. Very strange. I have never seen that happen. No idea what brand she was using. Um, but whatever brand it was, they use different pigments to create their burnt sienna. So what they're calling burnt sienna might be called something else in a different brand. As far as I know, there's no standards for art paints um, as far as that goes. So you just have to shop around and see what you like and what works for you. So on that note, I'm going to switch my camera here and we're going to test out a few burnt siennas, see what they look like um, with the different undertones. So I've got a Grunbacher, let me turn on some light here, uh, Grunbacher Burnt Sienna. This is their Academy brand or Academy line. Now different um, paint companies have different lines of everything from student grade up to professional grade um, and different um, qualities of paint, different bodies. There's heavy body, which is gonna be the thickest in acrylics uh, all the way down to um, a fluid acrylic. So it kind of depends on what you're using these for, but that's a whole other topic. So right now we're just going to talk about the undertones in these colors. So Grumbacher, let's try this out. Just gonna squeeze a little bit onto my palette. And I'm not sure how this is coming across on your screen because things do get lost in translation on the screen sometimes, but <clears throat> um, in reality here, it's looking really not like what I consider a burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is really a reddish brown and this is kind of chocolatey. It's, yeah, it is a reddish brown. It's not quite as red as I usually like my burnt sienna to be. That's just me. Um, and let's add some white to this and see what happens. So really, I'm just looking to see what, um, what it looks like when I add white. Is it going pink? Is it going lavender? Is it going beige? Is it going tan? There's not necessarily, in my opinion, there's not necessarily a right or wrong. It's whatever you're looking for in your burnt sienna. But it should hold, you know, a decent paint. It should hold its pigment pretty well. So when you add white to it, you should be able to still see the original color through, which it really honestly, burnt sienna shouldn't turn lavender. Okay, so there's the Grimbucker. Uh, next up, I've got uh, Windsor Newton Galleria. And this paint is actually really old. And so I poked a hole in the side to squeeze some out. This is a good um, lesson. Your art supplies, especially acrylic paints will go bad if you do not use them. Use your paints. Don't save them for a special project or whatever, just use them. All right, so I'm actually just going to 
a little bit of water on there. So this paint usually is not that thick. Just activating it with just a little bit of water here. Now it is fun if your paints do get old and chunky like this, it's fun to go in with a palette knife and just smear it, uh, smear some paints and do a big acrylic um, abstract painting. And just use them up. Ah, and that is still so chunky. We're just going to use the palette knife for this guy. But you can already see as it's spread thin over the white canvas that it's a stronger, it looks like a stronger pigment to me and it definitely has more, more of a red tone. Let's add some white. Spread that out a little bit, and you can really see the difference there. Even if I add a bit more white here, the tone is just really different than this one. This one is going down to uh, more of a tan, and this has got a little bit more of a peachy color to it with the white in it. All right, next up we have got Liquitex Basics Burnt Sienna, which in the tube, I love the way this color looks. That's really the Burnt Sienna I like to work with. But let's see how it performs. Um, it might not be, as, um, it might be a bit thinner than this other one. I mean, it's definitely thinner because of the, it's fresher. But generally speaking, this painting, or this paint, this Galleria is a heavier body than the Liquitex Basics. That's really a deep rich color. Look at the difference in these three colors. It's amazing. Grab some white. And when I add white to it, it's a little bit very close to the first one. Very close to that, yeah. All right, now I've got one more thing to try because I've got this uh, Artist Loft brand Red Ochre, which is something that I can certainly see another brand calling Burnt Sienna. It's very close. So let's just try this just for fun. Oh, I like that. And by the way, I mean, this is, you know, it's kind of good to know what you can substitute. Red ochre, you know, if you don't have burnt sienna, but you got some red ochre, that's a good substitute. So, you know, it kind of depends on what you want from your pigments, from your, in this case, from your uh, burnt sienna. So,
yeah some some are kind of tan some are beige some are uh peachy or orangey some lean more towards pink when you put white with them none of mine went lavender not sure what the deal it was with with her paints i don't know what brand that was but I certainly don't want lavender for Santa. <laughs> anyway, that's all I got for you. I encourage you to try this on your own. If you have a couple of different um, colors um, or different brands of the same color, try this out and see what you find and see what you like. It's a, it's a good experiment and have fun doing it. I'll see you soon. Happy painting.